Okay guys, so I've had a lot of requests to um, do a build a base file for a Gen 3 computer. Um, people have asked about how do you get a stock vehicle, what, what can you get out of a stock vehicle and it's, uh, it's OEM form without any modifications. So we're gonna do a build a base file. We'll go over here to my stock tune file repository and we'll pick a, uh, go with a, uh, an 04 GMC Yukon with a 5.3 liter motor and I'll just kind of go through um, just quick and dirty how I would do a base file for someone with a bone stock vehicle. That means we haven't added a camshaft or we haven't added forced induction or changed the cubic inches or anything like that. So this is what it's going to look like. And we can come over here to um, the calibration details and it will tell us, you know, the VIN number of the vehicle um, and essentially what it is, uh, which is important. And then if you go to OS right here, this will tell you um, the um, operating system uh, options, okay? Obviously here, this one has not been converted to a two bar system or anything, which you would do if you were uh, to be adding forced induction. Um, this one, we would not need to do that. Um, if we come over here to um, edit, again, you'll find the calibration details. Um, and if you go to, this is a big one, is the gear and tire wizard. This is where you can enter in a new gear ratio size as well as the tire size, which if you don't know the tire size, you can come over here to uh, tools, unit conversion, and you can enter that information in here and it will tell you. And then you can go back and plug that into the gear and tire wizard. And you would hit adjust and it would set that up for you, which you would want in here. Not gonna get anything uh, into anything else here. Some of this stuff is useful, but for right now, we don't really need to. Um, so, if we start in here in engine and under general, um, we don't need to change any of this. Um, the only thing that we would really change in here, you'll never need to change the firing order or really any of, the, you know, any of this stuff. Um, if you were changing displacement, you would go here and you would change this. So if you do some math, um, you, you, this is how you'll get the um, liters per cylinder uh, that you would need. Um, so you would take the displacement, divide it by eight, and that's where you, that's how you would get it. Um, so other than that, over here, there's nothing that you really need to mess with. If we go into idle, there's nothing over here either that you need to mess with. Um, if you were doing a camshaft, you would update the base uh, set point. You would command a little bit higher idle. Um, which we can go into in another video, but the rest of this stuff you do not need to touch. Um, even with forced induction or a camshaft or any of that, you don't need to touch that. Moving into airflow, um, if you were to by chance change the throttle body size, um, you could change the scaler here. However, um, the big thing in this tab is the base running airflow. If you add a camshaft, um, you're gonna have to go and adjust this and move these values up. If you change that ETC scaler though, that is going to shrink the base running airflow numbers. And so that you just have to keep that in mind. Um, some people uh, will change this if they go from a 78 to maybe like a 90 millimeter for a um, TBSS intake manifold. Um, but typically, um, I sometimes will. It just kind of depends, uh, just kind of where you're at and what's been working for you lately. Over here, um, startup airflow, uh, you can go in and usually with a camshaft, you'll command uh, some more airflow here. Um, don't typically need to do that though. The throttle follower typically can be left uh, untouched uh, even with a camshaft. The throttle cracker though, usually need to decrease some of these values here. This will create somewhat of a hanging idle. Um, if you kind of look at this table, it's got this big ridge right here, this graph. Um, you know, so you might go in and take some of that out. And there again, we can talk about that later. This is just for a, a stock vehicle, um, rolling idle, I'm not gonna mess with that. We go over here to airflow. None of this is gonna need to be touched right now. Um, this is your mass airflow uh, graph, uh, which when we do short-term short fuel trim charting, uh, we will edit the mass airflow data here, as well as the um, VE stuff here, the speed density table. So. Um, nothing to really do there. Um, if you were to be tuning just the mass airflow sensor, you would set this higher PM disable to something low, like 200. But for this application, the Gen 3s like to be ran in their blended mode, so we don't need to touch anything in here. 
which is pretty nice. Uh, electronic throttle, we're not gonna alter anything there either. Um, exhaust, nothing there to deal with. If we go under fuel, um, injectors are the big thing. If you were changing injectors, this is where you would do that. This would be the first thing next to the cubic inch uh, change if you were changing to a different size engine. Um, but we're not changing anything, so that's fine. Um, this is, looks like this is scaled for flex fuel. Um, so with 0% ethanol, it's set to 14.7. Um, um, all gas these days has at least 10%. And so I would probably go in here and select these two and I would just type in 14.1 and hit equals and just leave that like that. Um, the rest of this stuff you don't, you don't need to touch. Same thing with the cranking fuel, you don't need to do anything with that. We go over here to oxygen sensors. We do want to disable the long-term fuel trims. Just hit yes. When you hover over something, it will show you down here the max value. 400 is just kind of what I use. Hit one. It's never going to hit a map pressure of something like 255. So long-term fuel trims are disabled. That way it doesn't uh, remember any bad data if you have a sensor go bad or something like that. Um, so that's pretty standard. So changing the Stoich here just slightly and then shutting off the long-term fuel trims is a good one. Um, would like to go in during open loop and we want to disable the short-term fuel trims. We just don't need that to really do anything. Um, these can be left alone, um, even with a cam or forced induction. A lot of the time you don't, you just don't have to change them. Um, power enrichment. This is a big one. Um, so this is right here, the commanded, um, wide open throttle fueling. Um, we're going to start over here though, minimum map, I usually like to go 65, so it does have to have some sort of, uh, um, you do have to be in the throttle a pretty good bit to be to a high enough map pressure um, for it to trigger. There's several, several of these are all different triggers, so you have to meet, you know, meet them for it to happen. Minimum torque, we definitely want to put this something low, like 30%. We want it to, we don't want it to have to reach 100% torque before it can enter thr uh, power enrichment. The delays, we can set this to like 1,000. Set that to zero. Um, this is super high. Um, this is where you're gonna get like really good gas mileage, but also the throttle is gonna be really um, just kind of lazy. So we might go in here and set this to something like 60, um, and then maybe 5,200 and above, we can set it to like 15 maybe. And then we can go and interpolate, and that'll kind of smooth it out. And then we can take this table, and copy it to the cold. It's usually gonna reference the cold anyway, um, but just to do it for uniformity sake, there's the hot select right there. Ramp in rate, I usually go 1.3, you can go one, uh, it just kinda depends. EQ ratio though, um, for a truck like this, um, I'm gonna command like 12.5, which is a 1.176 ratio, and we're gonna set it all to one all to one value, that way it's not a moving target. So it's just one fixed value. So that's usually good practice. Um, temperature control, assuming we have cats, you know, we would leave that there. Um, you could change this min enrichment or the maximum enrichment to whatever your um, target um, power enrichment ratio is that you set back here. Um, that's just to keep the cats safe. Uh, most people aren't gonna run the vehicle at wide open throttle for that long. Um, so it's kind of okay. Um, here's your rev limiters. Um, so um, you can go in here and you can adjust these, okay? These cutoffs up here, you can maybe bump these to like 6,500, something like this, and then in gear, 6,500, and then set the resume to something just below, whoops, my bad something maybe like 6450, you know, um, same thing down here, 6450 would be a good number, 6450, and then you could set this to 6500, so most people aren't, aren't letting their full-size trucks sing out that far, but you certainly can. Um, control method, electronic throttle is definitely the way you want to go, in the Gen 4s and 5s, you can use the fuel or the, or the spark, but typically the the throttle is, is what you want to use. 
nothing else in here you need to touch, uh, deceleration fuel cutoff. You can turn this off during the tuning process. You can put this to something like 285 if you want to. Um, I typically don't um, and just leave that on and it'll be just fine. Lean fuel saving, nothing to do in here. Um, transient, nothing to do in here. Um, this looks like this vehicle does have flex fuel, so um, you can leave that on. If we go in here to spark, um, everything in here is going to be pretty okay. Unless you have a, add a camshaft, you're not going to need to do anything with, with these tables. 18 degrees is going to be plenty for the vehicle to run an idle. Uh, this is what your high octane spark table looks like when it's running on good fuel. When it senses bad fuel, it will go to the speed density or the, the low octane table. So if we come, oops, sorry. If we come over here, you can kind of see it's pretty, pretty straight looking. It's not too bad. Definitely was super rich, um, you know, commanding the some of the values that it was in the in the power enrichment table. But if you were, you know, if you were a stock vehicle, you know, you would just leave leave this like it is for right now. You could go and make some of these some of these negative numbers like, you know five and just you know make all of these numbers down here you can make these all you know fives or something like that and then you can blend these up like so um same thing down here something like that you would definitely want to go out and immediately drive the vehicle um if you were going to do something like this this is just kind of a down and dirty way to do it um, if you got big wheels and tires, you know, and a big lift kit and a lot of load, it's going to, you know, idle and kind of run in this low RPM, high load area. So if you have negative spark numbers, that's going to, you know, that might come back and, and get you. Um, and typically what you would do is you would take this table, you would come over here to low octane and you would paste this and then you would put about, you'd pull probably six to seven, we'll just call it eight degrees out as a buffer that way if you all of a sudden get into bad fuel that you know you're you know you're not going to be in a situation where it's just detonating like crazy the fuel base table we don't want any spark being added here so we're going to zero that out uh intake air temperature i might zero it out up to like 113 and then grab 113 and just kind of come over and just blend it a little bit that way it's not so aggressive Engine coolant temperature, 212 is really not that uh, hot, so I would set this to zero, and there again, grab 212, and just kind of comfortably blend that over. Um, EGR, catalyst, obviously that's not being used. Maximum brake torque, not going to have to touch that. Retard, I'd probably go to the recovery rate and maybe just multiply this by two, that way, if you see any knock, it doesn't just hang out. Um, I'm not going to really touch the rest of this stuff. You can disable the burst knock if you'd like. Set this to a, a high value, like 8, which is kind of a generic number. Um, come over here and zero this table out. I uh, would not touch the maximum knock retard. There's no need, to, no need to do anything with that. Dwell, you'll never have to touch that. Um, same thing here with knock sensors. Torque model, nothing here in the torque calculation. Um, really nothing here in the loss, even with a camshaft, like you can usually leave this stuff alone. Um, torque management, uh, you would want to notice if they've got these high values, 640, um, then this table's been maxed out, which is good. These are torque limits. So again, you come in here and set these to 640. This is more or less just force of habit. Um, set this guy to... 640 as well tip in torque it's already done you know these guys 41,000 I mean so you could come in here and make all of these 41,000 so on and so forth um, ETC max usually I'll go in here from like 10% throttle and below and just hit it as a hundred that'll usually work um, sometimes that can be too aggressive on like more aggressive combinations. Um, spark retard versus torque reduction. I would just leave that alone for right now. No need to really touch any of that. You could cut it down by half. You could come in here and, and put 0.5 in and hit multiply. Um, you could do that, but I would just get the vehicle up and running first before, you know, you do anything too crazy. Um, 
engine. If you had a camshaft, you might come in here to this max retard and zero this out um, just to make sure there's no extra spark being pulled when the AC's on. But the rest of this stuff uh, will be just fine. No need to touch any of that. Abuse mode, you can set this to 8,000 um, like such, you know, to get rid of the drivetrain abuse, but there's really no need to. Um, engine diagnostics, you can change some of this stuff. You can make these values really high, like 410, you know, that way they don't trip um, any of the airflow codes. But there again, on a, on a, a base file, you're not really going to run into that, that issue. So it would probably just leave that alone. Same thing with these Air Max, you know, deals. I wouldn't, typically wouldn't touch those until, um, unless you have an issue. Misfires, there's no camshaft or anything to trip up the misfire counter, so there's no need to touch that. DTCs, unless you're adding headers and deleting catalytic converters for off-road use, or you've added, you know, a nice set of long tube headers and you just want to turn the rear cats off, there's no need to really touch those. Um, fuel system, nothing to do there. System, if you had electric fans, uh, if you had, had converted the vehicle over, you would add the two fans and then you would, we would compare, use a compare file to, from like a Corvette or a truck that had them and put those in there and just copy all these settings over. Um, but I don't believe this has it, so we just hit no fans. AC, disable RPM, I would set to like 4,000. And then the re-enable, maybe like 3,800. Disable TPS, 80. Re-enable 70, that way when you go full throttle, um, it will um, disable the the, um, the AC system, which is good. Speedo, um, if you put your gear ratio and stuff in up here in the gear and tire wizard, it will automatically populate that in the Speedo for you. Um, limiter, you could raise the speed limiter to 120 or something like that, so... Again, just raise them all to 120. Uh, most people aren't going that fast in a full-size truck. So, yeah, so this is kind of what I would do on a base file and then uh, send a channels list over to a customer and do a data log and, you know, check the fuel trim data and make sure that the throttle blade isn't being closed by some reason. Um, and, yeah, that's kind of how we would go about that. So if uh, we can do another file uh, when adding a camshaft or forced induction of some sort, um, so if you uh, have any questions, uh, comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe and tell me what you want to see next. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.